Now that we've completed the hydraulic design of our system, let's go back and fine-tune the vertical alignment of our inverts. Moving back to our editor, I'm going to move into our long section view so we can see what we're doing here. And for our first example, we're going to work on the invert alignments at the downstream end of this pipe. So we're on to the pipe tab, moving back to the design tab, and we can specify the different modes. First of all, looking at minimum drop. Minimum drop will allow us to have a drop greater than our default of 20 millimeters, and you can see the fact that there is a fairly significant drop here. If I was to change this, instead of minimum drop, to minimum drop less than downstream diameter, we wouldn't see any difference when we regraded the pipes. What this setting is for is to stop 12D from making large drop pits. This restriction essentially says that this invert level must be below that obvert level, i.e., when this jet comes out of this pipe, we don't want it to impact directly into the opposite wall of the pit, but rather to at least flowing down somewhat into the pipe. So that's the idea of setting that minimum drop less than the downstream diameter. The next option we have is an invert to invert drop. And if I go regrade the pipes with that, you'll see what's happened is that we now have an invert drop specified of exactly 20 millimeters. Now if I was to change that to an obvert to obvert drop and regrade the pipes, because these pipes are the same size, you wouldn't expect to have any different setting at all. However, if we were to move back to a pit where we had an increase in pipe size, such as this one, let's go and pick that pit. Keep in mind, it's always the upstream pit because we're aligning the downstream end. If we now go and change that alignment mode and change that to a invert to invert drop and regrade the pipes, you see it's going to be exactly a 20 millimeter drop across the bottom and the obverts won't align. If we were to change that back to our obvert, obvert drop and regrade, you can see now, zooming back out, that we have that obvert to obvert alignment. Now be, there's one additional factor that's taken place here. You'll notice that there is no drop across this manhole. What's happened there is that if there is an increase in pipe size and a, putting the drop across there slightly greater than what's asked for, it will make sure that the obverts still align. The idea here is that yes, the obverts are aligning, but there is a drop across the invert still. Up until this point, we've used the default drop of 20 millimeters per manhole. We can customize this even farther inside 12D by creating a drop file. I'm going to call this my drop file. Oops. Then as usual, we're going to click on the folder and go and open up that drop file using a customized editor. Now if I just wanted to change the minimum drop, I could change this to anything less than 180 degree angle, which is everything, and go change that drop now to 30 mils. Write that file out, finish, and then go regrade my pipes. That would now make sure that I had at least a 30 mil drop across every one of my pits. Now the real value of this comes in, I'm going to go into this folder and go into the library and pull up this New Zealand drop file. The idea behind this New Zealand drop file is that with different deflection angles, there's different minimum drops. So if I was to use this and go regrade my pipes, 12D would look at the deflection angle in the pipes and then make sure that it had that least that minimum drop across the pit, assuming you had this set at minimum drop mode. So the drops that get used are now calculated from the, ang the pipe angle deflection and the value inside the minimum drop file. To display how the different grade modes worked, We've returned our alignment mode back to minimum drop and turned off any overrides on the pits or then the other pipes. Now, with minimum depth, what 12D does is make sure that it has the minimum depth at the upstream end of the pipe, minimum depth at the downstream, and then checks the grade of the pipe. If the grade happens to be less than the minimum grade, then the downstream end is shifted downwards to make sure you obtain minimum grade. So even when you're in minimum depth mode, 
you can always be assured you'll get your minimum grade. Now after it's finished that, it scans the pipe to find out if the cover has been violated at any location. If it is, the pipe will be shifted vertically downwards to make up for this deficiency in cover. Now if we were to switch this across to minimum grade mode, it operates just slightly different. I'm going to regrade my pipes. And what 12D does now is initially puts the pipe in at minimum grade. It does that step first. Then it makes sure it has the cover at the upstream, makes sure it has the cover at the downstream, and then goes along and makes sure that if there's anywhere in between it's violated, then the pipe is moved vertically downwards. The next mode we have is grade from downstream. What the grade from downstream does, if we go regrade the pipes, is you'll notice that it ignores the minimum drop. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see that we do have the minimum drop of 20 mils across our inverts, but we don't have any drop pits. And when the system is graded, it's graded at exactly the minimum grade. The purpose of this method is often used inside sewers where you want to keep the pipe network as low as possible and at the minimum grade. Keep in mind this is usually done for a certain length and then you'd probably switch back to minimum depth once you're underneath the low spot that you're trying to go below. The final mode we're going to look at is constant depth channel. This is usually used for open channels, not for pipes. So if we go regrade that now, what you'll see is that the obvert of the pipe is put up at the top of the surface. This one does not look at the minimum grade at all. It'll simply just make sure that the top of all of your pipes is sitting at the surface anywhere where you're at your manhole. When the 12D design engine redesigns the pipes, there's several constraints you can put on it to determine what maximum sizes it uses. So to show these, we're going to go to the pipe tab. And first of all, we're going to look at the width. The moment you enter a width value, 12D will assume you're working with either a box culvert or a trapezoidal channel. So with a uh, width only, we're going to put a width of 0 0.001 in here. That's enough to be a flag for the engine that when it resizes, it's to use a box culvert. Now when it sizes a box culvert, it will look through the list of available sizes and make them wider and wider and wider until the maximum width is hit. Once the maximum width is found, it will go to the next larger size in diameter. Once again, starting at the smallest width, working to the largest. Once the maximum height of pipe is used, it will switch over to multiple pipes, and it will try two of the same size, and then three of the same size. If this still doesn't work, the routine will stop and use three of the maximum size. If you'd like 12D to go and design a trapezoidal channel for you, go ahead and put a top width in. As soon as you put a top width in, that's once again is the signal to 12D that it's to look for trapezoidal channels in the pipe size section. Then once again, if the section that it finds is not large enough, it will go to a wider and wider section until it finds the widest one with that height and then we'll move to the next height. So for this example, we're going to leave this as a mil one millimeter width and go rerun our design engine. So if I went to storm analysis and make sure that I had the modify sizes turned on and there are box culverts turned on in the metric pipe size and go rerun this, it's going to resize that and then when I go back to the editor, you'll see that it has upgraded it to a 375 in height by 300 width box culvert. Also on the design tab, if we move into here, we've got other controls. The first of all is the minimum pipe height. Some systems you may want to have a minimum pipe size of 300, for example, throughout the entire network, but once you're finished with the laterals, they, your minimum pipe size might have to be 375 for your trunks. So you could specify the minimum size for your trunk lines. The maximum pipe height, pipe height is usually used if you're trying to thread between yourself between two surfaces. For example, above one surface and below the service and below the road. By putting a maximum pipe height in, once this height is reached, 12D will automatically switch over to try two and then three of pipe sizes. Sorry, three of the same size pipes. 
The final method we're going to show you to control the resizing of pipes and the change of the inverts is the locks. You have locks for your pipe sizes and for your upstream and downstream inverts. The idea is to use these as infrequently as possible during the design mode as it will constrict what 12D can do with its design. However, if you had a mixed system of an existing pipes and new pipes, you would definitely want to lock your existing system so that it would stay the same and then leave 12D to redesign the new system. As far as locking inverts for trying to get underneath or over top of services, you would definitely want to consider the other methods we discussed for later on in this training session under service clashes. Previously in our training, we've discussed how the 12D pits can be linked to the road design strings. We linked to the road design strings so that we could determine the grade levels and the set out levels for construction. Now we talked about the links but we did not show you how to do them. So now what we're going to do is move back to our global tab, utility models and create another link. And this link is going to be called my roads. I'm going to select the folder button then go to open to bring up the editor for this and in this we're going to specify the models that contain our road strings. Now in order to show you how to do this we could just click on them as before right mouse click and then go select our road 1 strings. Instead we're going to show you how the populators work inside 12D. I'm going to create myself a new view, view new plan and onto this flat plan I'm going to add all of our road strings. So I'm holding the control key and I'm selecting my road one strings, road two strings, three strings, four strings, and I'm also interested in my road center lines. So I'm going to add them all on at once. Do a fit on that and you can see those strings. Now, in case I needed to put one of my pits onto a curb return, I might want to add those as well. But for right now, I'm going to assume we're going to leave our inlets off curb returns. Now, to use the populator, I'm going to right mouse click on this column and say populate models. I'm going to populate it from all the models that are currently on view number four and then say populate and finish. You'll notice what it's done is it's loaded the models off that view. Now, for the set out string ID, this is the name of the strings that we're going to link our inlets or manholes onto. Now we're using the back of curb, but because there's a left back of curb and a right back of curb, I'm going to start with the wild card followed by BOK. Now I'm going to highlight that, control C for copy, then I'm going to go down and paste that into the rest of those columns. The search distance is the maximum search distance that 12D is supposed to go between the center of your pit and the string it's looking for. Now our pits are supposed to be on the road design string. So I'm going to make this search distance point, excuse me, point zero zero one, one millimeter. And I'm going to copy and paste that into the cells as well. And it looks like I haven't gone one too far on the back of curbs. Now, in addition to getting those levels off those road design strings, 12D can also use that road design string to rotate your pit symbols for your plan drawings. It's also used to determine the direction to get your road grade for your inlet, for, uh, your inlet capacity curves. And finally, it uh, can be used to determine the angle that your water approaches a grate for your KU calculations. Now the other thing that we can use our road design strings for is a center line string. Now if we were to go and check our road center lines, I'm going to do a string inquire and we can see that those center lines are all called either, so I'll back off on that, sorry, are e all either called road two, road one, but they definitely begin with the word road. So our ID for that is going to be road followed by a wild card. The search distance has to be all the way from the back of curb to the center line of the road. Now if I wanted to check that out, I could come to my information, sorry for that, the information button, drag across till I get to my bearing distance. And then I could come and measure the distance from the center of the road, little mouse and click, and come back to my back of curb string, 
is my right back of curve. And if I look at my dy distance, it was 9. Point, I'll click on that again. It was 7.6 meters. There you go down here. So I'm going to make that search distance 8 meters. Cancel out of there. 8 meters. Now, the road center line will give us several values. First of all, if we're planning on rotating our symbols so that there's one for the left side of the road and one for the right side of the road, then we need to know where the center of the road is in relationship to the strings. So therefore, we need a center line. The second thing we'll do is if we need road changes, those road change and offsets are sometimes used for set out. We need a road center line in order to calculate road changes. And finally, even if you're not going to use the road changes, often your inlets are supposed to be the same distance from the center line. When you hit your set pit details, we'll produce a report for you telling you how far your inlets are off your center line. Now, if you see one that's out of alignment, it's a quick flag to yourself that you should go fix that. All right, let's go write these out and then finish that. And the button that does all these links is going to be your set pit details. Now, let's finish that and let's go back to my pit tab and move over to our set out tab. This will help confirm to you what's being done. First of all, you'll see that it's the string has been linked to a right back of curb string and we have got ourselves a center line string. Now that means our grate levels that we talked about earlier, if we go over to the main tab, those grate levels are now going to be 150 milliliter, millimeters below the set out string. Now the other thing that happens when we went and press set pit details with these links is if we go to our output window and bring that up and go set pit details again, we still have a blank stream. One more step to be done. If we return to our defaults and go to our pit tabs, we can tell it that we'd like to use these strings. Now, if we want to get our Z levels from that set out string, we have to come across and say that we want to use the set out string. Now, we also say that we want to use the road center line, so we'll come down here and say we want to use the road center line as well. Now, if we would like to quote the X, Y location of the pits from the set, set out string as well, then we could also change that to set out string. Now, set pit details, and let's go look at our output window. What's in our output window now is the distance from the center of our pit to the road center line, and the distance from our pit to the set out string. Seeing that all of these are zeros confirms that our pits truly have been snapped directly onto the back of curb, and seeing that they are exactly the same distance from our center line helps us be assured that we have the proper offsets for our road.